Hello and welcome to the weekly review, a program of Sawasawa Network, uh, making sense uh, for everyone topics and news. Uh, my name is Roger Alfred Yoron Mudi, I'm the producer and the host of the show. Uh, and uh, as uh, a number of you already know, uh, on Saturday, the 24th of October, the United Nations uh, celebrated its uh, 75th anniversary. And uh, today we shall be looking at uh, the rights of women and girls in South Sudan and related issues. And we are joined via Zoom from Juba by Data Gordon, the founder of Men for Women, uh, initiator of Condomize and Don't Compromise campaign, and an advocate for sexual and reproductive health and rights. Uh, Data Gordon, welcome to the program. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, uh, you, the initiative you do, uh, through the initiative you do, you have been on the record saying that uh, you believe involving men and uh, boys in promoting the rights of women and girls uh, can make progress uh, 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 towards a gender equal society for uh, uh, South Sudan. Uh, in South Sudan. And um, how, how is the situation on the ground in South Sudan in light of those uh, beliefs and uh, advocacy and even rights uh, and um, also given the recent celebration uh, on Saturday uh, of the 75th anniversary of uh, the UN uh, which you also participated in? Okay, thank you so much and um, I would like to say we are far from the target uh, based on the current situation in South Sudan. Uh, we know uh, that uh, uh, many people refer to, 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 to South Sudan, like many other countries, as a patriarchal society where men take control of everything. And uh, with so much advocate, uh, the engagement of men and boys, because we believe men uh, and the, uh, being a patriarchal society, men take lead. So creates the narratives, and it will be easy for us to be able to reach to every man on board. You find that. Uh, uh, being, uh, the, the promoters of patriarchy uh, get on board to change mindsets. So can say that we are still... Sorry, there was interruption. Internet was not okay, I think, on your side. Could you just say that again? Oh. Okay, I, I, I was saying uh, South Sudan uh, is one of the patriarchal society and the, by engaging men and boys uh, is that we will be able to achieve gender equality because uh, one, being a patriarchal society means men and boys are in control being to a woman or being to another man. So having them on board creates a conducive environment for women to be able to have their rights uh, and, and, and privileges uh, gotten back uh, uh, from the men to have them uh, so that we can be able to achieve gender equality. And that's why when you look into that, men are the perpetrators of violence. Men are mostly the stigmatizers of women. For example, girls, when it comes to issues of menstruation, and uh, when they are stigmatized, they drop out of school. And when they drop out of school, it is hard for us to achieve gender equality because the future of this young girl is already finished. So having men on board to be able to, to, to not stigmatize uh, girls, having men on board to be able not to perpetrate violence against women and girls, and having men on board to be able to promote gender equality will make us to reach that end. But for now, we are still far from the target. Uh, uh, how about the activities? You've been involving also men in creating awareness on, on, on those issues and rights and uh, to remove the stigma uh, on women and girls. Um, Give us, you know, uh, some details uh, about the activities. Uh, how, how are they going? Okay. Uh, first of all, Men for Women is an initiative of two youth-led organizations. That is OK Africa Foundation and I Am Peace Initiative. 
And these two youth-led organizations came up together to have this initiative called Men for Women. Men for Women targets men and boys on two fronts, on menstruation and on sexual gender-based violence. On menstruation, we engage men and boys because we know menstruation is a normal biological body change in a woman's body. And men mostly uh, stigmatize girls when they menstruate. And we know the state of menstrual health, like in terms of products, in terms of services, in terms of information, in terms of taboos that surrounds menstruation, for example, in South Sudan. And it is not up to date. It is not even up to uh, uh, the middle, uh, like 50%. So there's so much that happens when it comes to a natural biological body uh, process where you find that women go to the market, when they are buying sanitary parts, they put in black caveras. Uh, and, and when man talks about uh, menstruation or talk, uh, talks about menstrual parts, it's seen as a taboo, it's seen as a women issue. Now, as men for women, we've engaged uh, primary schools, and in these primary schools, we've brought both boys and girls together and had a conversation with them about menstruation, and also gave a hint about wet dreams, because we asked if wet dreams is a normal biological process in a man, in a man or a boy, then why not uh, menstruation? And secondly is that if a woman does not menstruate, it means she cannot be able to conceive and give birth. So meaning if a woman is able to menstruate, then you as the, the product of a missed period, definitely you must be proud that there is someone outside there who menstruates and is able to give birth to life, and that is a human being. While on the issue of uh, sexual gender-based violence mm -hmm. is that we look at, like a report has been uh, released by UNFPA that was uh, late last year, mm -hmm. that 98% of the perpetrators are women. And so much advocacy, there are so much empowerment has been done on women. And we are saying, uh, I can borrow uh, a quote from my uh, friend, Brother Maria Michael, who said, you cannot empower an oppressed wife who later on comes back to a primitive husband, or you will be uh, co causing them conversation with the men through what we call the men talk. For example, yeah, issues of other forms of violence, like sexual gender-based violence, issues of economic, uh, uh, like uh, economic oppressions, for example, done by men to women. You don't want to give your, your wife uh, money for, for upkeep and other things. Uh, and, 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 and these are things that we engage. How would you feel if it is your in that way? Let's live about uh, cultures, but let's look at the positive cultures and we retain them, then we do away with the negative cultures that affect us. Because if you empower uh, a woman, and for example, you a husband and wife, and all of you are working, it really helps a lot in developing the family. You can hear me? Yes, I'm getting you. Yeah, you, uh, that you talk about developing the family. So you, you are through with your point. Okay, that's fine. We, we can uh, then hear from you um, the response of those boys and girls, uh, the boys and men. Uh, uh, on those initiatives, uh, uh, are they welcoming it or they, they're still also hesitant? Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Um, for example, when we first went to our first school, that when we went, we gave sanitary parts after the awareness and everything, we give sanitary parts to both boys and girls, including both male and female teachers. And the instructions we give were clear. To the boys, go and give to either your sister or your mother. While to the girls, 
If you're menstruating, that is for you. If you're not, go and give to your sister or your friend, female friend, or even your mother. And for the teachers, go and give to your wife. And if you have a girlfriend, go and give to your girlfriend. If you have a daughter, go and give to your daughter. And the message is, tell them menstruation is a normal biological body process. Let them be open and be free to have a conversation with you. So when, when we gave this, the feedback we got from that particular school from a teacher was uh, after he went home, he took the sanitary parts and gave to the wife. And the wife was surprised because that was the first time that he brought sanitary parts to her. So she was surprised and she was like, are you drunk? Eh? Like what, what really happened? And so, um, well, uh, sorry for the internet interruption. You can continue giving us the feedback uh, from the people you, you involved in the initiatives. Thank you. Um, we've gotten positive and negative feedbacks from people we've engaged. And uh, even those people we virtually engaged in uh, uh, men for women in terms of engaging men and boys in uh, uh, to support uh, women and girls. Uh, for example, we we've, we've gotten both positive, as I said, and negative. Starting with the negative is that uh, many men believe this is something that is for women to talk about. It is not supposed to be talked by men. While our uh, reaction has always been that. Menstruation is a natural biological body uh, change in a woman's body. Why is it only a woman's issue? If a woman is menstruating, it means a woman gives birth to a human being, and that is us. And some of us are the men who stigmatizes women for something that is natural, for something that if they get, it results to us. So with those uh, uh, conversations, we were able to change some of the perceptions from other men who look at it as a women issue and they change to be uh, like, okay, it is fine. I think this is something that all of us can be able to rally and, and do. While on the positives is that, yes, men have already picked up. For example, currently we've so far trained about 38 male champions and these male champions are going to be advocating on issues of uh, menstrual health and also on uh, ending sexual gender-based violence. And they will also be able to do what the MHM lab or men's for create more awareness. And they are not believed that all health management labs uh, in, the, in, in the States or where they are definitely will be able to have a ripple effect of the Men for Women initiative in other parts of the country. But for now, so much is going on and uh, no only on the feedback from men, also looking at feedback from women is that there are many women who appreciate this and they are, they are coming out boldly to be able to talk about their experiences on menstruation, while there are those who still believe that we are not supposed to talk about menstruation. So we, we of course, we, we welcome every response, we welcome every feedback and uh, Positive feedback reinforces us to do as look at what can we be able to many that things negative uh, outside there. So with that, we've also done that. And we believe that together we'll be able to change the society. The other activity that we've done that is changing also mindset is that we are saying parts for birthdays. So if you have your girlfriend, if you have your wife, if you have your daughter and she is celebrating her birthday, if you're going to buy a car, if you're going to get a, 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 a cake, at least attach a pad because attaching a pad, giving to her, you've already created a confidence in her and she will be able to have a conversation with you in the near future about menstruation. So that alone is also something that we are able to, 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 to get a feedback on. And on a, a men talk that we've had, we've gotten positive feedback and they like for currently, uh, there is so much that is Coming in, they are asking when I was since the family in the country, it is dropping and we were not able to hold men talk. So we do hope that very soon we'll be able to have men talk. So with the fact that they are asking 
when we look at the conversations and we look forward to having that. Uh, uh, okay, let me start from the government uh, side. Uh, I, I must be very honest that we've gotten uh, a support uh, and, and leadership from uh, the Minister of General Education and Instructions. Uh, for example, the Department of uh, Gender, Equity and Inclusive Education. Uh, we've gotten so much support and that's why even we were able to host the first ever national So with the leadership of the government and the ministry itself, it is very uh, positive we are able to get that. We are also able to get uh, from the general in the Minister of Gender, Child and Social Welfare, also a support, like uh, with our related activities. So because we are able to distribute more than a thousand reusable sanitary pads uh, to selected vulnerable women and girls uh, within the country, not just approvals from the uh, Minister of General, uh, Gender, Child and Social Welfare. So that is uh, also from the government side. We're also able to get uh, support from the Minister of Health. For example, they were able to recommend to us uh, trainers on menstrual health. They are able to recommend to us also trainers on other parts of sexual reproductive health and rights, for example, on family planning. So we, through these uh, government entities, we are able to get support one and we are able to move forward. Now, from the development partners, I must say from the beginning, we've started getting support from the United Nations Population Fund, UNFPA, South Sudan. When we had the first initiative, the, the first activity and people got to know about it, uh, UNFPA South Sudan gave us 300 reusable uh, sanitary parts and the 300 dignity kits. And this was able to amplify our work. We were able to reach many more uh, vulnerable women and girls. And after that, UNFPA is currently supporting the Men for Women Initiative. Um, it's a one-year project that uh, has started uh, uh, in January this year, and it's ending in December. And uh, in this, we have a lot of activities that has gone on in terms of distribution of reusable sanitary parts, in terms of advocacy on tax exemptions, in terms of even, for example, celebrating the menstrual health management, uh, menstrual hygiene day on the 28th of May, also hosting the first ever national symposium on menstrual health management, uh, that is all through UNFPA, and many others, like, for example, Formation of AFRIAN, the uh, Af uh, AFRIAN Network South Sudan, uh, support to Shabab Le Shabab Health Alliance and the uh, youth coalitions organizations all came through from U United Nations Population Fund. So we, I must also say, not only the government and the UN agency have supported us, but I must also appreciate the private sector and individuals together with the media. The media has played a very critical role in the Men for Women initiative because through the media, we are able to reach as many people as possible. Through the media, the other government agencies, the United Nations agencies were able to get to know us. Through individuals who are able to donate sanitary parts uh, and shop, we are able to reach more vulnerable women and girls and also organize for sessions in schools. So I will also uh, say we have gotten uh, immense support from individuals as well as the private sector in terms of uh, uh, clinics, companies, and the media uh, fraternity at large. Well, uh, for what, what? What more do you expect to get? Or, or what support do you want to be able to move in the right direction uh, uh, working on those uh, rights of girls and women uh, in the country? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me start from the government point of view. Uh, we do not have currently guidelines in terms of uh, uh, menstrual health management interventions. And uh, we do not also have, for example, the GBV law uh, in, uh, being enacted or passed in the country. Uh, so moving forward from the government point of view, I, I would appreciate if we have policies. Currently, there is a draft of the national guidelines on menstrual health management, which is uh, headed by the Minister of, Gender Child and, Minister of General Education and Instructions with support from the United Nations Population Fund, UNFPA. And we do hope that before the, uh, the year ends, uh, we should have that document passed by the ministry so that it guides uh, interventions on menstrual health management. We are currently also looking forward into forming the National Coalition on Menstrual Health Management. We, are, uh, we want to do mapping of uh, actors on menstrual health management in South Sudan. And uh, we've already have a draft of uh, the, 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 the mapping document, which is already submitted to the Gender Thematic Working Group. 
which will review and then submit to the Ministry of General Education and Instructions for their re uh, review. Once passed, we will roll out that and then form the national coalition on uh, menstrual health management. Having a national coalition is, is so important in the sense that it informs interventions and we will be able to, to see where do we need to have more interventions and where do we need to have lesser interventions. Uh, thirdly, also from the government is that I look forward to having the MHM policy, the menstrual health management policy, because as a country, we need to have a policy that will guide interventions, that will guide uh, everything. Uh, thing. So the policy will, will have a strategy. So if it is, uh, for example, we have a policy, we should be able to have three to five years strategy on issues of what are the priorities now on menstrual health management. Now, also to the government is that the government made commitments during the Nairobi summit in November 2019. And among those commitments were exempting taxes on sanitary products, distributing free uh, sanitary parts to, to, to age appropriate women and girls, and also uh, uh, passing the GBV law. Those are among others, some of the commitments the government made. And also other commitments the government has made is increasing the budget on health, also uh, making sure that they implement the, the Youth Enterprise Development Fund, the passing of the youth policy, as well as uh, the Women Enterprise Development Fund to be passed. And, and that, that also came handy. So we hope that uh, the, the commitments made by the government during the Nairobi summit, and also those commitments made by the uh, signatories to the agreement, of the revitalized agreement of the resolution of conflict in South Sudan are implemented. Once they are implemented, we'll be able to have uh, a, a gender equality. Uh, at least the path to gender achieving gender equality will have been uh, smoothened and fastened. So that is on uh, looking at the government. And we also appreciate their support be... in terms of... Just to be clear, on the revitalized agreement, are there, what are the commitments in relation to, to, to the gender issues? Uh, in the revitalized uh, agreement of the resistance of conflict in South Sudan, there is the Women Enterprise Development Fund. So the, the, the Women Enterprise Development Fund will help women uh, entrepreneurs to be able to expand more, create more employment opportunities, and be able to have an impact in their society. So if they have a source of income, then definitely it becomes in handy. And, and maybe uh, just the interesting thing is that young women will also be able to cross between the Women Enterprise Development Fund and the Youth Enterprise Development Fund. As long as a, a woman is below the age of 15, you can benefit from both, which is so good. And, and it will amplify uh, economic growth for women and girls in the country. So that is on the... Uh, on, 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 the, on the agreement itself. While on partners, general national and uh, uh, international partners is that as men for women, we are looking at issues of uh, menstrual health and sexual gender-based violence. Let's continue to support initiatives, uh, not only for men for women, but also other initiatives across the country that supports the empowerment of women and girls and protection of women and girls in the country for us the gender equality. For example, uh, now uh, men for women is that we have the MHM lab sessions that we we'll love to roll out in the country at least next year. So if uh, we can be able to get support for us to be able to roll out this, it will help us so much. Second is that we do not need to only have uh, uh, condom dispensers. We need to have menstrual health uh, parts dispensers in schools because not every woman and girl, will, like for example, girls who goes to school, go with the menstrual parts in their pockets. And sometimes uh, out of the blue, you find that they already get their past menses or they get menstruation. So what needs to be done is that we still have uh, menstrual parts dispensers in schools and in public institutions, for example, maybe even in public uh, toilets, so that in case a woman is, is inconvenienced somewhere, she has access to these services, not just a matter of has to pass go to the uh, clinic or any shop and buy, but there and then, she can be able to have access uh, to these services. And thirdly is that to partners, let's also support the government in making sure that the government commitments are fulfilled and uh, we make sure that everything moves. Let's continue advocacy on, on, on ending child marriage in South Sudan and then engaging men and boys. Now to the society. As, yeah, say, as, uh, we, 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 as we're winding up, I think this is the last question. Uh, 
-hmm. Your message to the society, in fact, you're almost there. So, your message to the people of South Sudan as far as the rights of girls and women are concerned. Okay. My message to the uh, people or the society in South Sudan is this. Let's not stigmatize menstruating women and girls because menstruation is a normal biological body process in a woman's body. Two, let's not inflict any form of violence on women and girls. Let's assume if you inflict violence on another woman, how about if it is your own daughter? How about if it is your own mother? How does it feel? Let's have that come in handy. Let's support women and girls for us to be able to achieve gender equality. And that is why there is a belief that when you empower uh, a, a woman, you will be able to empower the whole society. So let's continue with the advocacy. Let's continue to change our mindsets. Let's uh, leave the negative cultural practices and move to the positive cultural practices. Well, uh, Dr. Gordon, thank you very much for being on the program. Uh, bye for now. Thank you so much.